The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Addressing the people and his disciples, Jesus said, The scribes and the Pharisees occupy the chair of Moses. You must therefore do what they tell you and listen to what they say, but do not be guided by what they do, since they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on men's shoulders, but will they lift a finger to move them? Not they. Everything they do is done to attract attention. Like wearing broader phylacteries and longer tassels, like wanting to take the place of honour at banquets and the front seats in the synagogues, being greeted obsequiously in the market squares and having people call them rabbi. You, however, must not allow yourselves to be called rabbi, since you have only one master, and you are all brothers. You must call no one on earth your father, since you have only one father, and he is in heaven. Nor must you allow yourselves to be called teachers, for you have only one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant, Anyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and anyone who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. So good morning to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay. So... First of all, I'd like us to remember that for today's Word of God, the most important thing for us to meditate upon is the last two sentences of the Gospel. The greatest among you must be your servant. Anyone who exalts himself will be humbled. Anyone who humbles himself will be exalted. Okay? So this is a verse very important for us to keep in our heart today and to meditate upon. Just highlighting it so that you won't be distracted later because there are so many things that I might want to talk about today that might distract you from this most important message. So the rest of what I'm going to say you can forget. This last two sentences of today's gospel, promise me you will keep it in your heart, meditate on it for the rest of the week. Okay? All right, now here comes all the distractions. Uh, it's supposed to be a joke, never mind. So the, distra <laughs> the first distraction actually is a lot of what the readings today is talking about actually is aiming more at us who are priests, those who are the leaders and all that, right? So not only the priests, those who are leaders in the church, whoever we may be. So a lot of all this, actually when we read it this Sunday, we are also reflecting on ourselves. Right? And so the first reading has a very stern warning against us. It says this, now priest, this warning is for you. Of course, he's talking about the priests of long ago, but applicable also to the priests of today. Or whatever religion, whatever denomination we may be in. Those of us who have been entrusted with a duty to act on God's behalf, yeah? to do God's work, to be his mouthpiece. Yeah? So same also, the Pharisees, the scribes also all being condemned. But Jesus acknowledges they have been given a sacred duty. That's why he tells them even you respect them, even when they are not practicing what they are preaching. <laughs> okay? And very often, I think you might realize that maybe yeah, those who are up here preaching, we are also not practicing what we are preaching. And not to excuse ourselves, but you must remember, you know, we are only here standing in place of Jesus, but we are not Jesus yet. We are far from perfect, yes or not? Every one of us is a weak human being, also the priest. Lah. And those days you have the scribes, the Pharisees and whoever else. All of us weak, even though appointed by God, we can also be tempted 
we can also fall into sin. We might also do wrong things. And hopefully, though we are preaching the right things, we are at least trying to practice what we preach. And that usually uh, should be the case. Lah. We are all trying. So all of us on the road to try. But of course, you know, you strike the shepherd, you scatter the sheep. That's why the devil likes to target the priest. Once he whack the priest, the priest falls into sin, whole community will collapse. Yes, isn't it? Because uh, it will be a scandal, one thing. And if the leader is misguided or lacking in faith, how can the followers be better than that? Usually not. Yeah? Sometimes yes, but usually not. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to share with you all. Because you see, when we reflect on the readings gospel also, we reflect also apply to our own self. Just like how we apply, ask you all to also reflect and apply to your own life. So sometimes word of God directed really directly to the priests, those who are the leaders and all that. Because God reminds us that we have a responsibility to walk the talk. So what we preach, we must practice. Okay? Now, how about yourselves? You may not be priests, but in your own life, you may have some position of leadership. Simple thing as being the head of the family. Whether it's the father or the mother, the head, I do not know. Lah. Depends in which family there might be some dispute about this these days. <laughs> Things are not so clear anymore. But whoever is the head, or there could be two heads in the family, whatever it is. Remember, you are teaching your children also. So what you are teaching your children... <laughs> Make sure you practice. If not, your children also will condemn you. They'll turn around and say, Ah, father, Papa is saying this, Mama is saying this, but we know what they are doing. Do you think they're going to listen to you? Of course not. Same thing, isn't it? So, applies also to all of us. Right? Everybody. Wherever you are, if you are holding a position of leadership, a responsibility, make sure you try your best to walk the talk. Okay. So that's the first thing that I wanted to share with you all this morning. First distraction. Lah. Okay? But maybe there's something there to reflect upon also. But remember, ah, what was the main message today? Anyone exalts himself will be humbled. Anyone who humbles himself will be exalted. Okay, now I'm coming straight to this point now. Okay. If you are a leader, most important thing is you must be humble. Yeah? If you are not humble, nobody is going to follow you actually. Isn't it? So, but sometimes people look at humility and they might see it as a kind of weakness. It is quite contrary to the logic of the world for someone to be humble. Because we might think that a humble person appears like a weak person, appears as someone who is like, maybe like not sure of himself, a bit more understanding, uh, easy to take advantage of. Yeah? So these are some of the hurdles you might face if you are trying to be someone who is humble. And then when you try to be humble also, some people will try to manipulate you. This is the other problem we will have. So being humble is not easy. It's really difficult. And in fact, most of the people in the world, they do not think much about being humble. Because it's much uh, more tempting to be someone who is respected, put up on a pedestal, even feared. Uh, a lot of people like to be feared, actually. You get what I mean, or not? Yeah, some people like to be feared. And using fear, they will force the people who are under them to follow. It's a very, I think effective method because most of us human beings actually most of us are cowards we run away from fearful people yes or not only some might be you know courageous to fight against fearful intimidating people and uh, that's one of the tactics that a lot of people use they bully others to do what they want yeah so anyway it's not a good thing. I'm not saying be that, huh? just to be clear. <laughs> Do not be such a leader. Do not be such a person. Instead, be humble. 
Now, being humble actually does in fact give some leeway to others also to disagree with you. Yeah, so again, it may not work in whatever secular work you are doing. Eh? You might not want all those under you to be disagreeing with you all the time. But whatever it is. That's why it's so hard to be humble. A humble person will ask and value the opinion of everybody. A humble person has regard and respect for everybody. And that's very difficult because sometimes we like to think ourselves always better than others. And we want it to be so, that we are better than others, so that they will respect us. But can we return the same respect to others, accepting that even from a little child, I can learn something? Uh, if you are really a humble person, then even a little child, in your mind, in your heart, is able to teach you something. Okay? So lots of uh, more elderly people here, Parents, grandparents, yeah. You know, sometimes the children and the grandchildren like to scold you, right? <laughs> I know, I see it happening sometimes. That's why the Bible says, tells the young people, you have to be patient with the elders, you see. <laughs> but uh, often the young ones, they got no patience for us, for whatever reason. Because I think uh, there's a generation gap at times. Okay, but whatever it is, for all of you who are on the not-so-nice side that is being, you know, <laughs> scolded. Well, all I can say is be patient and try to be humble and know that, well, maybe your children can teach you something also. Just hopefully they'll be more gentle. So for the children who are out there, yeah, please be patient with your elders. Yeah, and especially when they come to you asking for help with the phone, you know. <laughs> Don't la, sh shoo them away. Okay. Yeah, I know. This is something I always do. <laughs> my father will be disturbing me all the time. What happened to my phone? I'll be doing my work. I'll be like, Pa, I'm busy now. What are you doing? What did you do to your phone? <laughs> oh, your goodness me. So, anyhow, yeah, we all have to be patient sometimes, yeah? But I marvel also at the elderly people sometimes, how they are really still trying to learn new things. And we should appreciate them for that. It's not easy, you know, if you are born in an age where there's no technology of that sort and then you are 70, 80 year old and you are trying to learn all these things, can you imagine how difficult it must be? Right? And not only that, you know, these phones all you see, for us very easy, the lock screen, do whatever symbol all. You try that with the elderly, the finger cannot move properly even, the symbol also cannot draw. They are locked out from the phone, oh goodness me. Actually, a lot of these gadgets, they are not elderly friendly. And when you change it to the mode for the, for the handicap or for the elderly, it appears so stupid that it's even harder for them to use. Yes, I tried. I changed to the simpler mode and I found it was more difficult actually. <laughs> so funny. Okay, anyway, that's a note to all those who are developing phones and all that. Please go and look into that. Yeah, the simplified mode seems to be more difficult. Yeah, anyhow. Okay, coming back to the point, being humble means also I can learn from those who are younger to me, I can learn even from a child. Yeah? And if we have that, then you know, we will be able to face things better. As we grow older, we can also take things um, more happily, knowing that our children love us, maybe they are just lacking patience. And perhaps we still can learn something from them. Okay, so now coming to second distraction, but I brought you back to the main point huh, about humility today. Second distraction. Some of us might read today in the gospel, you know, don't let anyone call you rabbi, don't let anyone call you master, don't let anyone call you father, don't let anyone call you teacher. Then some people say, see, Catholic Church, huh, they're calling the priest father. They are going against the Bible. Any of you heard this before or not? Yes, right. Okay, this is actually distraction. This is not the main point of today's homily. Eh? Main point today's homily, what is it? Humility. Right? That's the message. But okay, all the distractions, we talk about it so that it's also a bit entertaining. So, anyhow, a lot of times people like to condemn us about this. Yeah? 
and uh, I would like to say maybe they should call the priest mother. Okay, we'll get more condemnation, I think. Okay. You know why I was saying that? Because you look at the second reading. Ah, St. Paul says, like a mother feeding and looking after her own children. We feel so devoted, protective towards you. Yeah, I think maybe that's a better model for the priest. Yeah, if only we could be more like mothers. I think maybe then sometimes we won't fall into the sin of being very harsh with the people and scolding the people so much, but more in a very f kind of a, a very forceful kind of way, you know. Now, not that mothers don't scold the children or so, I'm sure they do, right? But they get away with it, I think. Fathers scolds don't know the children will be melted away. So fathers, you'll be careful. You've got bigger palms, you've got bigger everything all. Mouth also, your voice also is more fierce. Be careful when you scold the children. Eh? They can be very badly hurt. So many, you know, we call them with children with daddy issues. Oh yeah, there are so many. Then they are broken their whole life, you know. So I know these days, uh, luckily these days, there's no more corporal punishment, luckily. But you know, even with our harsh words, uh, we can melt people, you know. We can really reduce them, reduce them until they have no self-esteem anymore and they are totally broken. Now, that's not the way to teach our children. We should never do that. If we correct, we must make sure we must also encourage. If we condemn something, we must also make sure there's something to praise. We must balance so that they know they are not only the wrong things, they are also the good things, the right things. So that can help them, yeah? Okay, but coming back to this thing. So, shall we call our priest's mother or not? No, okay, no, they're not saying that. They're not, they are saying that we should not even call our priest's father. Okay, then how about all the school teachers? They call you teacher, how? Uh, then, I think nobody at home, the children don't call their father's father anymore, right? They'll call daddy la, papa la, papi la, whatever la. Isn't it? <laughs> Okay, anyhow, this is missing the point. This is not what Jesus is saying. Because Jesus himself let the people call him rabbi. When they come and call him rabbi, he doesn't really say anything. Only one time in the Bible, somebody came and called him good master. Then he was like, why you call me good? You know what you are saying or not? That's the only time. All other times they are calling him rabbi and whatever, not all, nothing. Yeah. So, let's not miss the point. The point is, we should not be desiring that people should be respecting us and demanding that people should be giving us this kind of respect with, through these titles. Yeah? And that is, seems to be, he's following up on what he's saying about the scribes and the Pharisees. Yeah? He's reminding all of us, we must be humble. Yeah? And not think that our whole identity is there just in that title. Yeah, of course, there is a deeper reason, and that is he wants to remind us always that we have one Father in heaven, right? And that is our Father in heaven, and He is the Father, okay? And He teaches us also to pray to this Father in heaven. Yeah, so whatever it is, remember, He wants us to remember God. And we should not make gods of ourselves behind whatever title it is, Yeah? And if you're a humble person, then you shouldn't fall into this trap. You will hear the title and it will not cause you to feel so proud of yourself. Yeah? So if anything you want to be proud about also, be proud that you are a sinner. Isn't that a bit strange? No, it doesn't mean glorifying the sin, but proud that you're a sinner and God still loves you. Ah, that you can be proud of. Proud you're a sinner and yet He has called you to be His servant. So that's a humble person. A humble person can also be proud, but proud in the right way. Because his reference point is not himself, but God. Okay? So, can a humble person be proud or not? Is this a trick question? Well, if his reference point is God, yes. And yes, you can be proud about your Catholic faith. You can be proud about being a child of God. You can be proud about so many of these things, even of your achievements, what you have done in this life. You can be proud about that too. But if your reference point is God, 
you will be glorifying God for those good things and not expecting people to glorify you for those things. So you see, where's the reference point? It's okay to be proud if the reference point is God, not yourself. Hmm? Okay, so it was not a trick question. It's possible to also be proud whilst being humble. Just keep the reference point as God. Okay, so what was the main point for today? Do you all remember? Maybe we can all remember this for our scripture reflection this week. Actually, it's two sentences. The greatest among you must be your servant. Okay, I didn't talk much about this. This is for us to go back and reflect when I serve people, when I am in interacting with people, do I have the attitude of someone who wants to be served or am I someone who is happy to serve? Yeah? So this is the attitude we are looking at. Yeah? Do we want to be served or are we happy, on the other hand, to be serving? So better to be serving. And that is what Jesus says, greatest among you must be your servant. Second sentence we try to remember, anyone who exalts himself will be humble. The one who exalts himself, reference point is himself, not God. So that is what it means to exalt yourself. And yes, God tells you, He warns you, if you do that, you will be humbled. Ah, that's the scary part. Pride comes before a fall. You all know this phrase, right? Yeah, it is so true. Pride comes before a fall. Okay, now the other half of the sentence, anyone who humbles himself, meaning reference point is God, he will be exalted. Who is going to exalt him? God is going to exalt him. And that is the secret of living a very happy, peaceful and content life. The secret of being a humble servant of God. And that is what I pray each and every one of us will be.